Hey everyone, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. I am here in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and today I'd like to speak with you about the price of Bitcoin. More importantly, I'd like to speak about why one person may look at the price and decide that it's expensive, while another may look at the same price and find it to be a bargain. Let's investigate further. A common reaction I get when people hear the price of Bitcoin for the first time, how much? For one? How am I supposed to buy anything with that? And that's a fair criticism if you're unfamiliar with Bitcoin. However, it is important to learn that Bitcoin can be subdivided into 100 million parts, the smallest of which is called a Satoshi. So when you're buying a whole Bitcoin, you're technically buying 100 million Satoshis, which in perspective, makes the price of a whole Bitcoin not seem that bad, or even cheap to some people. In between a Satoshi and a Bitcoin, there are a lot of different denominations. You could have millibits, you can have bits, you can have Satoshis, and a whole bunch of things in between. The way to think of it is we have names for different denominations of our own currencies. So for US dollars, you can have dollars, on a lower scale, you can have pennies or nickels or dimes or quarters. On a higher scale, if you have a lot of US dollars, you could say you have a few grand. Or if you're doing quite well for yourself, you could have a few mil. So we already have these nicknames for these denominations that exist. It's just a matter of learning and getting comfortable with the denominations in Bitcoin. The other important thing to realize is that you don't have to buy an entire Bitcoin. You can buy those smaller denominations. So if you only have five bucks, you can buy $5 worth of Bitcoin. You don't have to go and buy a whole one. That is very important to know. The next question I usually get asked is, why would you have such small denominations like a Satoshi? You can't buy anything with a fraction of a penny. And while this is currently true, there are use cases for that, but I'm gonna go past that and delve into the monetary policy that governs Bitcoin and why we would need such small denominations currently. Bitcoin turns monetary policy that we're used to completely on its head. We have fiat government issue currencies across the world right now and those fiat currencies are inflationary that means that the buying power of a single dollar over time decreases you can buy less with your money today than you could a year ago or two years ago or further and further back and there are actually websites that can show you how much your dollar back in the day would have been worth as compared to today When you go to the corner store today and buy a Coke, you are spending more money than you would have spent last year and the year before and so on and so forth. Why? Is Coke more expensive to produce? Is Coke becoming more scarce and so the price is being driven up? No, it's because the value of your money is going down. That means you can buy less with the money in your pocket year by year, meaning you need more of it to afford the Coke which has remained roughly the same value. <sighs> the monetary policy behind Bitcoin is designed with the opposite goal in mind. Every four years, the number of issued Bitcoins gets cut in half. This means if we continue on a trajectory of more use cases and users, it's simple supply and demand and the value of Bitcoin goes up. This means that as time goes on, those tiny Satoshis that aren't worth very much right now could eventually be feasible to use in regular day-to-day -day transactions. I'd like to draw a comparison between Bitcoin and my home currency of the Canadian dollar and show how their monetary policies are really the inverse of each other. So in recent years, the Canadian dollar has continued to be devalued as all fiat currencies are over time. And we recently hit a tipping point where the penny was no longer worth using and so we got rid of it all together. That denomination was such a small value that we decided to do away with it and no longer use it. 
So our smallest bit of currency now is a nickel or five cents. We've seen the inverse of this start to play out in Bitcoin. I would argue that using the denomination of one whole Bitcoin no longer really makes sense because in day-to-day -day transactions, you're not gonna use one whole Bitcoin. You're gonna be using fractions. So this is where we would start to use denominations like millibitcoins and bits and eventually Satoshis. So while the Canadian dollar is doing this and we're having to use bigger and bigger denominations to make sense, Bitcoin is doing this and we're having to use smaller and smaller denominations to make sense. It makes a lot more sense to go in and buy a Coke for three millibits than to go in and buy a Coke for 0 0.003 Bitcoin. Now, it is important to note that this is a scenario that will only play out if Bitcoin continues to gain use cases and users over the coming years. If something better were to come along or if the consensus was that a different currency made more sense, then we would see a drop in value because demand is not keeping up with supply. So what do I think of the current price? Is it going up? Is it going down? Well, that's for you to decide. If you believe in the ecosystem and you think it's going to continue on its current trajectory, well, then it may make sense for you to put some of your own money into Bitcoin. But I cannot stress enough, it is very, very important that you only invest money that you can afford to lose. Bitcoin is still in its infancy and a lot of things can happen to make it go very well or to make it go very wrong. So please use caution and again, only invest what you can afford to lose. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Feel free to drop a tip at the QR code at the end. If you can't, please share this video with anybody that you think may benefit. I will see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.